If enough people cross streams, a toilet should automatically flush, but the question is, how many streams would you need? Welcome back to Engineered Bets. Today's line is 34 and a half people, and it's your job to take the over or the under. Where in order for it to count as a flush, I'm placing this stick I found on the ground in the toilet, and it must exit out the bottom. A toilet is pretty simple and just works by dumping water into the toilet bowl, which pushes water up over this trap, and as the water leaves, it creates a siphon that pulls more water and any undesirable logs with it. The tank holds the water, and when you flush like this, this flapper is lifted, which lets the water drain into the bowl. That means there's nothing special about the toilet that would prevent you from simply adding water directly to the bowl to flush it, and this is a great way to save water during droughts as your showers heat up. Anyway, instead of dumping a bucket of water, the next logical question I had was how many people would need to piss simultaneously to achieve a similar result. When I tested my volumetric flow rate, I found that I was able to fill up 190 milliliters in about 8.3 seconds. And don't worry, this was just a dramatic reenactment and the actual measurement was done more accurately off camera. Anyway, that gets a flow rate of 0.006 gallons per second and I'll be using this as the baseline flow rate for one person. Since all you need to do is raise the water level to above this point, you might think that one person with a monster bladder like Scott Hansen after a seven hour red zone day would just be able to drain his tank and it could achieve a flush. And the truth is, I do not, I do not go to the bathroom. However, if it doesn't fill up fast enough, the water can just slowly seep over and out the bottom, which might not produce enough siphon to get rid of the stick. If I looked at this completely unnecessary protrusion on the toilet bowl that makes toilets about 10 times harder to clean, I could estimate the diameter of the trap but then I'd have to pretty arbitrarily decide what velocity would be enough to create a strong siphon. So instead, I decided to start the approximation by looking at the rated volume per flush, which for this used toilet I found at Goodwill was about 1.6 gallons per flush. Performing a test flush, I saw that it took about six seconds to flush, which would get an average flow rate of about 0.27 gallons per second. However, as you can see here, the water level before is significantly higher than after the flush because this toilet isn't hooked up to a water line, so it doesn't account for the part where the bowl slowly fills up after the flush, so you don't have to sh it in a dry bowl. And this part typically happens as the pump refills the tank. To account for the fact that the flush still happened without needing that extra water, I chose to estimate the volume for the flush by measuring the before and after water level in the tank, which starts at this line here where the sensor normally would tell the pump to stop filling and then ends down at the flapper. This drops the new volume down to 1.25 gallons, which in 6 seconds gets you an average flow rate during this test flush of 0.2 gallons per second. In addition to this just being an average across the duration of the flush, there's several other things to consider when comparing this flush to that for human streams. First, toilets have evolved over the years to become more efficient, so you'll see that during the flush, some or most of the water is actually brought into the bowl as a jet here towards the bottom, which helps kickstart the siphon. I'm not sure if the jet from urination aimed at the center of the toilet bowl will be quite as good, although maybe it could be as good or better since it's falling from higher, but I doubt it. At the same time though, this flush volume isn't the absolute minimum for a flush. Big Toilet knows they need to ensure their toilets can consistently flush and occasionally handle the hefty amount of toilet paper that your relatives use when laying monsters at your house during Thanksgiving. With that said, using the standard flow rate I set for one person, I got that it would take about 34 and a half people to match that of the test flush. Trying to fit 35 people around a toilet has some ethical concerns and is something you'd probably only see at a frat party, so I'm going to use pumps and tubes instead to mimic the streams. I originally sized these to try to make one tube be one human stream, but even 35 of those is a pretty daunting logistical challenge, so instead I'll just set the flow rate of the pumps to be the maximum to try to minimize the number of pumps I'd need. After testing under this new setting, I found that one stream provides about 0.014 gallons per second, or the equivalent of 2.25 human streams. Converting the line to match this, and I got the new over under for you as the viewer to be 15 and a half tube streams. To make sure things are clear, that means that the stick has drained out the trap with 15 or fewer tubes, the under will hit, and if it's 16 or more, the over will hit. Pause now to think how reality will vary from this basic calculation, which is probably the most winged out of any episode in this series thus far. And now it's time to see what actually happened. Starting with one, unsurprisingly, the water simply drains out through the trap slowly without producing enough siphon to flush the log. With two pumps, it was a similar story and no progress seemed to be made. Likewise, with three, it didn't seem to be doing much either, although it was starting to pummel the stick a little bit more. Adding a fourth one didn't seem that promising either, but then to my complete surprise, I suddenly couldn't see the log anymore, and sure enough, it actually drained out the bottom. I was not expecting it to happen so soon, so I didn't have a camera set up up close to see it better, so I decided to run it again. Personally, I wasn't expecting the stick to be removed unless the whole bowl ended up flushing at one time, and I kind of regret not adding some toilet paper, but I'm trying to stay committed to not ever modifying the experiment to make the result closer to the line so that it's truly uncertain for you as the viewer. 
That means based on the defined rules, since the stick drained out from four tube streams or the equivalent of nine human streams, the under has smashed the line. Congrats to those who got it right. If you guys want me to do it again with toilet paper and perhaps a bigger log, I'm fine with doing a follow up to give you a chance to predict again, but let me know in the comments if there's any other ways I should modify the criteria for it being considered a flush before I go through with that. So far in this series, I've done both basic and more in-depth calculations, and this was the first where there wasn't really any physics or engineering theory, but this question popped in my mind and I wanted to see what would happen, so hopefully you enjoyed it regardless. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.